Hi, my name's Neil Stewart from Dulux Group. Um, you probably all know, and I hope you know, Dulux Paint, but um, Dulux Group with umbrellas more than just our paint business. We we also have B&D Garage Doors, so the Roller Door Company. We have Yates, the Garden People as well, Parkham. We also have a big kitchen manufacturing company, so so that all falls under the Dulux Group umbrella, but um, I'm here to talk about Dulux Paint. I've worked for the Dulux Paints business for 25 years, so you can imagine I've seen some environmental changes in those 25 years. We have a um, big statement, we say a, a future without harm, um, and we, we've had this statement for uh, maybe 15 years now. Um, the, the paints business, um, we, where we've come from, from really making a mess of the environment, I think, to um, seeing some radical changes. And one of the biggest changes in the last two years isn't just Dulux. So our industry partners, we gathered together, and um, our friends from um, PBG or Torbans, as you you know them, and um, Wattle, um, their Sherwin, Sherwin Williams, as well as some other pen suppliers, Hems, as well, to name name a couple. We've um, got together and um, created this paint back scheme. So it's so it's an industry scheme, and. And the story behind this, we, we said, before we get told what to do, let's make sure we're cleaning up the industry. So, so you, whenever you buy paint, you pay an additional 15 cents on every liter of paint these days. And um, it probably doesn't affect you too much, but it affects some of the big commercial painting businesses. But it's, but it, it's what has to be done to help clean up this industry. And in two years, we, we actually started off quite slowly um, with the paint back scheme. And the reason we started off quite slowly, we, re we really didn't have the infrastructure there. We, um, we needed to get some funding. This 15 cents per litre took a little bit of time and momentum to, um, to get pace and create the, um, the infrastructure. But in, in two years, we're, we're absolutely flying um, now, and we have lots of funding. We're about to open a lot more sites. Um, we started off. Um, two years ago with, I think, one site in, in Sydney um, where you could take your materials back to. Um, now we've got something like 10 um, sites with, with more being opened constantly. Um, so, so, the, so the concept is, if you have paint and, and, um, and packaging materials, now you can take it back to one of these um, paint back sites. The, the, the materials, so the leftover paint, um, gets reused, recycled, re reworked, um, and then the actual packaging can then be recycled. Um, so, so if we look at some of the statistics, um, we've actually 7 million kilos of waste and packaging in, in two years this um, paint back scheme has, has delivered. Um, so so we've now, we now cover... 85% of the population, so there is some outlying areas where we don't have a, um, the ability to take the material back to, but that will come. In, in fact, so much so, we're, um, we're looking at mobile systems where they'll actually come to, to sites and, and pick up the material and the packaging as well. So, so I think in the industry, um, this, is, this is one of the... Um, biggest steps forward in, in, in a closed loop approach. And so the closed loop approach, um, the material that gets gathered is actually um, reused and reworked and, and turned, into other, turned into other paint. So, so the, the paint that's reworked can be used to um, paint fences, um, line marking, field marking, that sort of thing. So. <laughs> Recycling paint, I was just talking to Stefan before, recycling paint, once it's on the wall, well, it's really hard to do that, but we can recycle um, wet, wet paint. Um, we have something similar in New Zealand where you can drop off your used paint as well, and it, it, it's very similar. So you, you'll all see this um, grow really quickly with the funding, with this 15 cents per litre that we're all contributing. This is going to grow really quickly, and we've got a, we've got a few announcements um, very soon that... Um, I won't be able to talk about today, but very quickly. So, so that's not just Dulux, that's, uh, that's an industry <laughs> thing. So. Because we can't re recycle um, dry, dry paint, what we want the industry to do and what, and what we do is 
are, we, we have an, a research and development centre in Melbourne, and we have over 100 scientists, chemists working in our um, analytical centre at creating and developing fantastic products that are going to last a long time. So, so we've just got a, a few products on the screen there that, that you might know of, some of them you may not know of. But, but the concept here is we want products that, that are going to last for a long, a long, long time. So, so we've got this product on the end here. You can see this duration. We've got one of the products in the duration van that externally will last 30 years. Um, so, 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 so there is a good, well, it's closed loop approach, um, or, or at least we're manufacturing systems that are going to last a lot longer. I was talking earlier about we actually introduced the first low VOC paint in, um, in Australia, and it was about 96, and, and we actually brought it in for the Olympic Games Village there. So if you met, those of you who are old enough, remember the, the games were the green games. And um, so, so we, had the, we brought out this product, and it was called Dulux Breathe Easy, and it was a low VOC paint, first, first to market. It actually died because nobody would buy it. We actually were probably um, way in front of the uh, in, way in front of the game, but we did use it on the um, on the games village and, and this product. So it was low VOC, and there we were bragging about this. But you know what? It was it was a terrible product. It it, had, it contained no VOCs, but you practically walked past it, and the thing marked and it scuffed. So yes, it didn't contain VOCs, but you probably had to paint the thing every six months. Um, so, so yes, so so we've gone from we've gone from low VOC um, paint to low VOC paint that last a long, long time. Now, there are, there are some costs associated with that, as you can imagine. We we can make cheap paint as well, um, but what we want in in the future is making low VOC paint that is going to you know last for 25, 30 years. The problem is. Um, Paint, and if we talk about internal paint, it's part of fashion. So, so we might be able to manufacture something that'll last 25 or 30 years. But um, is it, is it um, perceived obsolescence where you'll you'll want to actually probably change it in in 10 years or so? But but we can make coatings that'll last 25 and 30 years that are low VOC. In in fact, j just looking at this range here, we really don't need water-based. Uh, sorry, solvent-based paints any longer. These are all water-based paints. There is, there is, technically, there is no reason why we should be ma manufacturing solvent-based paints. We do. Um, I don't actually think we should, but we do because the market is asking for it. We have lots of commercial um, painters out there and, and home painters who have grown up with solvent-based paints and oil-based paints, and they still gravitate to that. We only make it for that market. We don't actually need to. Technically, we don't need to be making solvent-based paints. All of all of our um, paints for the future are, are water-based. So, couple couple of challenges we see. Um, we, we 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 constantly ask for consumer feedback. We we've got these hundred scientists. We want we want to keep them working. We want to keep them busy. We want to make them earn and their money. So we're looking for feedback as to how we can progress and what we can do in the future. So have we, have we got any architects in the room today? Any, any? So, 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 so we actually love our architects because they actually, they keep us honest and they tell us what, what we need to manufacture. We can't always come up with this ourselves. We need feedback on that. Um, waste, we're, we're doing really well with it, with our waste. And, and I think last year we had another 40% reduction in our, in our waste to landfill. Um, but one of our challenges uh, are, are resources. Where paint is manufactured from raw materials, and it, in in a lot of situations, it's mined raw materials. We have um, raw materials such as titanium dioxide, which is a real common pigment. It, it's a mined pigment. All of the paint companies use this. Um, it's got it. It it it'll has a life. Um, so so, our, one of our challenges are looking at raw materials that, that um, can be um, reused. Just to finish off, we've um, we built a new plant, and we built a new plant last year, and this, we're, we're all bragging about this, um, because this is the most up-to-date paint, paint plant in the world. So, um, so we're really proud of this one. 
if you see now other pain plant which was in Rockley was built in the 1950s so if you're imag imagining some horrible old plant that's got chemicals all over and polluting the atmosphere that was Rockley this um, plant here is, is a state of the art paint manufacturing facility and um, we've, um, we've got solar power we've got um, water reclamation systems so, so that's the good thing about um, being able to be, be in um, Australian um, stock, um, top 100 companies, we can go and invest in the future and invest in good plants that are looking after our planet. So. Thank you very much. Thank you.